Hi, my name is Tim Scheib, curator of the International Data Archive at the University of Iowa Libraries. And today I'd like to give a very brief introduction to the data movement and to the resources of the data archive. Data was arguably the most influential art movement of the 20th century. Even today, there are plenty of writers and artists who call themselves Dadaists. And the notion of what qualifies as Dada can get pretty vague. So it is fair to ask, what is Dada? For me, the easiest way to answer the question is historically. Dada was a literary and artistic movement that thrived chiefly in Europe from roughly 1916 to 1923. We could extend these dates somewhat backwards and forwards, but it is this historical moment, movement that I will be talking about today. And that is the focus of the International Dada Archive. Dada developed as a reaction to the First World War and it started roughly halfway through that horrendous conflict. The classic beginning date is February 5th, 1916 which is when a group of writers, artists, and performers opened a venue in Zurich, Switzerland, known as the Cabaret Voltaire. Now, since Switzerland was a neutral country, Zurich had become a haven for draft dodgers, anti-war activists, and anyone who wanted to escape the charged atmosphere of nations at war. The founders included the German poet and dramatist Hugo Ball, his partner, Emmy Hennings, who was a popular actress, singer, and poet, and a group of students from Romania, including Tristan Sara and three Yanko brothers, who all just happened to wander in during rehearsals for the opening night. The cabaret lasted just five months, and it presented an eclectic array of acts remain, uh, ranging from classical piano music, popular songs, and Russian balalaika tunes to abstract dance, lectures, manifestos, and sound poems. Here's the most famous of the Dada sound poems. Uh, you have to picture the poet, Hugo Ball, standing on stage in what has been described as his magic bishop costume, having worked himself into a trance-like state, reciting his poem like a religious incantation. The poem is called Caravane, and don't worry, you don't need to know German to follow it. Yolefanto bambla, o fale bambla, grossigam fahabla chodem, egiga goramen, ego ploico rusula huyu, ho la ca ho la la, an la go pung, la go pung, la go pung. Posso fatica. E, e, e. Shampa vula vusa oloba. E tatacorem. E shikatun bada. Vulubu subudu ulub subudu tumba pa umf. Casagauma pa umf. By April. The word Dada had been chosen to describe the activities of the Cabaret Voltaire. The word was resonant with a variety of meanings. Uh, it could be read as hobby horse in French, yes, yes in Romanian, and even as the name of a uh, hair product that was widely advertised in Zurich. When the Cabaret closed, Dada activities continued in other venues. In 1917, Sara started publishing his magazine titled Dada, which you see here. Before the end of World War I, word of the radical art movement spread to many corners of Europe, even though many Dada participants insisted that Dada was not, in fact, an art movement. Now I want to do a little flashback to a few years earlier in New York, where some artistic activities rather similar to those of the Zurich Dadaists we're taking place in the 291 gallery, housed in the apartment of famed photographer Alfred Stieglitz. Like Zurich, New York was a refuge for European artists fleeing the war. 
The superstar among these artists was the French painter Marcel Duchamp, who had achieved, achieved notoriety in the United States when his nude descending a staircase number two was shown in New York's Armory Show in 1913. A few years later, Duchamp was at the center of one of the most famous art scandals of the 20th century. Duchamp served as director of the Society of Independent Artists, which for its 1917 exhibition promised to display any work that was submitted with the proper entry fee. One submission by an R. Mutt was a porcelain urinal displayed on its back and entitled Fountain. The directors rejected the piece and Duchamp resigned in protest. The review Blind Man had devoted its first issue to promoting the exhibition. The second issue was devoted to the R. Mutt affair and pointedly featured an image of the offended sculpture taken by Stieglitz, the pioneer of artistic photography. And here you see Stieglitz's artistic photograph of the urinal. Only later was it revealed that Duchamp himself had submitted the urinal, one of his many so-called ready-mades or found objects. Anyway, back in Europe, in early 1917, Richard Hilsenbeck, one of the chief animators of Zurich Dada, returned to a Germany that was weary of the war and to a Berlin ready to embrace Dada. A number of artists and intellectuals who had at first fervently supported the German war effort were now organizing anti-war events and Hilsenbeck brought the Dada sensibility to these protests. A group of leftist writers printed a series of political reviews and tracts using various tactics to avoid wartime censorship. In November, 1918, a mutiny within the military led to two major events, the overthrow of the emperor and Germany's surrender. As a result, a civil war broke out between two factions, communist and social democratic, vying for control of the country. The Berlin Dadaists identified primarily with the communist faction, and this orientation is reflected in their publications, of which you see a few here. When the war ended, Tristan Zara was intent on making Dada into an influential international art movement. And to do that, he felt that he would have to move to the world capital of art, Paris. In January, 1920, Zara finally arrived in the French capital. There he was eagerly awaited by the artist and poet, Francis Picabia, who edited a journal called 391 and who was a major link between the avant-garde art circles in New York, Paris, and Zurich. Picabia put Zara in touch with a group of young writers, including André Breton, Louis Aragon, and Philippe Soupeau, the editors of a magazine titled Literature, Literature or Literature. Zara and Dada took Paris by storm, organizing the first Dada event within a week. Paris Dada quickly took off with a host of performances, publications, and other events, even including a Dada guided tour of a minor left bank church. Here you see the flyer for that tour. Eventually, a major schism took place among Paris Dadaists, culminating in a violent fist fight in connection with a performance of one of, one of Tsara's plays. And by 1923, one faction had broken off to form the new surrealist movement. And this has become the classic ending date for Dada. However, Dada continued to spread beyond its cities of origin to places as far flung as Yugoslavia and Japan well after 1923. Here, here you see a Japanese Dada publication. Well, I could go on and on about the Dada movement, but I do want to tell you about our International Dada Archive. The archive was founded in 1980 
and it has grown into the world's most comprehensive repository for the documentation of the Dada movement. Our website is at dada.lib.uiowa.edu. You can see that at the top of the screen there. That's dada.lib.uiowa.edu. I'm going to quickly through, run through each of the tabs that you see at the top of this home page. So at the Dada archive, we collect not only the rare original documents of the Dada movement, books, journals, and ephemera, but also works of art about the Dada movement, secondary literature about the Dadaists, and editions of the Dadaist literary works. If you want to see a good sampling of the rare original materials in our collection, you can go to the Dada Digital Library. Uh, Here you see the listing of the items available in the digital library, uh, data periodicals, and then books or monographs by author. If you click on one of these titles, say for example, the magazine data, you'll see a list of all the issues that we have. And you click on one of them, you see all the pages in that issue, and then you can get more detailed views of each page. If you want to search all of the titles in the Dada archive, well over 60,000 titles, you can go to our online catalog, also known as the International Online Bibliography of Dada. Uh, this database uses the same interface as our main library catalog. So it has a search box, it has an advanced search feature, it works like any online catalog. The next section of our site is a list of all the Dadaists whose works we collect. Uh, so here you see most of that list. Uh, somehow this ended up uh, put into random order uh, by name, uh, which is very Dada in spirit, but not very useful. And actually, since I made this slide, they've fixed that. So it is in alphabetical order. Uh, if you click on one of these people, say, Jean or Hans Arp, you'll see first a little basic information about the person. You'll see what's in our digital library. Uh, so you could click on those titles and go to that book in the digital library. You'll see a list of other internet resources uh, like the Arp Museum. And then you can also see individual texts in magazines in the digital library and go directly to those texts. Next, we have a link to our online journal, Dada Surrealism. Dada Surrealism was first published in a paper format in 1971, uh, continued to 1990. And then it's been a free online journal since 2013. So this is the most recent issue. Uh, And then finally, we have a listing of other online resources related to Dada, including a number of museums and some associations uh, devoted to individual Dadaists. That's all I have time for. Uh, I thank you for your time. I'll gladly take questions. Uh, you can email me uh, at timothy-shipe at uiowa.edu. Thank you.